Hi, welcome to another video on our how to series. This is Sam from Portena. In this video, we'll show you how to configure LDAP external authentication with Portena using Open LDAP. We'll also go through configuring group filtering and Teams auto population. I have Portena installed on a standalone Docker host and I am managing several endpoints the Docker host itself, a Swarm cluster, and a Kubernetes cluster. I also have OpenLDAP installed and have a PHP LDAP admin running as well so that I can manage my OpenLDAP using a web GUI. I'm using O6CR Docker Open LDAP and O6CR Docker PHP LDAP um, images to uh, get Open LDAP working and PHD LDAP admin uh, to get a GUI. And here's a look at the PHP LDAP admin page uh, where I can manage my directory. I've already created several users and corresponding groups. Uh, in the open LDAP directory. Uh, these are the uh, users and the corresponding groups that I've created uh, inside the open LDAP. Um, so you can see users under Portainer users and several groups under Portainer groups. I also have the read only account um, that's enabled so that we can use that to have only access to the directory. To configure LDAP external authentication, we need to go to settings menu in Portena, then click on authentication. It's currently on internal authentication mechanism. We simply switch to LDAP and configure our settings in there. So for LDAP server, my server IP address, you can use the name if you have DNS working DNS in there and for the uh, reader DN I'm going to use my read-only account that's already enabled it needs to be a bind account and then click connect so we can connect to the LDAP server using that account so next um, if you choose to use um, LDAP S You'll need to change the port to 636 and um, tick the box for use TLS. Um, I'm using self-signed certs at the moment, so I'm going to skip the certificate check test connectivity. That's all good. And um, for base DN, we can simply copy um, the OU that I've created here, because that's what I want to use for the base DM for the users. I'll copy that from there. Base DN. And the username attribute in our case is the UID. And um, I simply have the object class as equals I net arg person. I'll show you how I can get that from. So if we go here, so it's simply the object class in there that we can use. So just using case and stu, so using that there. And for the uh, group search, we can copy the same for our groups OU. Go here, copy that, and the group member attribute is member, and group object class, we'll copy that from there as well, so it should be the group of names. So, object class equals names and save settings that's all there is to it now any users under this portainer users or you should be able to log in so if I 
log out from here. I'll try to log in as uh, one of the developers. And log in. As you can see, we can log in, but as we have not given any access to the user, you will not see anything there. That is to be expected. I'll show you how to do the uh, teams and users now. I've logged in as the admin user. If I go to the users menu, you'll see here that the user I just logged in as is auto added and the authentication type is set as LDAP. From here, you can give that user access to the resources and endpoints as you like. But when you have a handful of users or more than a handful of users, it gets really tedious to do individual user level access. So that's where the uh, teams come into play. So to use teams, we go into the teams under users menu and we create teams here. And keep in mind that we will need to create these teams the same names as the groups in your AD that you want to use inside Portainer. So for example, in our case, that's devs, testers, um, read only, and admins. So you'll notice that these are the same groups that I've created inside Portainer underscore groups in the LDAP directory as well. Now that we have all the teams added, I'll go to the endpoints and give them access to some of the teams. Uh, to make that easier, we can group the endpoints into um, groups. So for ease of use, I've grouped Docker and Docker Swarm into the Docker group and um, Kubernetes into the Kube group. You can have many clusters in here. So I can give access at the group layer. So if I click on the Docker and I can select testers to have access to the Docker and create access. So testers will now have access to Docker group, which has Docker and Docker Swarm clusters endpoint in there. And for cube, I'll give devs access to that, create access. I will also give access to some of the resources inside um, our endpoints. For example, in the Docker standalone endpoint, I have um, several uh, containers running. Ghost container here is public, so everybody should be able to see it. And Caddy is restricted to administrators. So if I go into Caddy, I can restrict, uh, change the um, ownership to the team that I want to give access to. So that, for example, testers. Okay. And update ownership. It should now change to restricted and the group that has access to that would be testers. Similarly, if I go to the Swarm cluster, I'll have a look at my WordPress and see the ownership here. I can currently set to public. I'll change it to restricted and the testers team again. Okay. So I finally I go to the Kubernetes cluster, go to the resource pool, and I can give say web services um, namespace access to the devs group. I'm going to create access. If I log out now, log back in as the developer. I can now see the Kubernetes cluster because developers have access to it and he's a developer. 
and if I go to the resource pools, I now have access to the web services. All the other resource pools, I have not given access to the developers or the devs group. So the only thing he can see would be the one resource pool or namespace that I have given him access. So I'll log out from there. Log in as John Smith. And he is a part of a tester group. And we've given access to the Docker and Docker Swarm clusters endpoints. So here you'll see both of them. And if I click on Docker only as John Smith, I can see the public um, container and the restricted to testers only container. Okay. Similarly to Home Swarm, we should see the WordPress stack. Yep. So, yeah, that is how we manage teams and groups. So if I log out and back in as admin, go to users and teams, devs team, you'll see that he DDS, he is a um, developer, is already auto added to the team here. And similarly for the testers, John Smith. Um, this is done automatically based on the uh, group names that we have uh, that's matching the team names so this is a very powerful feature uh, this this is really useful when you have a large number of users that are um, or a, a group of users or users that change quite often um, you can use the ldap membership uh, to give them access to your resources inside Portana and the resources inside each of the endpoints. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to um, comment and just let us know. And thank you for watching. Catch you next time. Bye.